It's my pleasure to introduce this uh, panel of uh, amazing panelists, my colleagues, Mesa Qasim, Mesa Lama Shamsi. Mesa is uh, the project manager of Guggenheim and Bulabi, and Salama Shamsi is the um, project manager of Zayed National Museum. And of course, we have the amazing artist Ahmed Mata with us on stage, in from Saudi just this morning. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to briefly introduce the talks uh, overall this year for Abu Dhabi Art are looking at dissecting the GCC narratives. So today specifically what we're looking at is uh, collections and collecting. So I hope you enjoy the talk and uh, please feel free to have uh, questions at the end of the, the panel. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've given you a bit of background on uh, both museum collections, uh, a bit of idea on the narratives, I think it's time to turn it uh, to Ahmed Matar and ask um, a few questions about the series. So, um, both works in Zayed National Museum and the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi are from the same series, uh, Desert of Faran. And I know there's some, something very interesting about the title of this, um, of this series, so maybe you can talk about that. Um, and also the, uh, the inspirations behind the series. Uh, first, uh, thank you, both museum from here. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, uh, uh, yes, for uh, Desert uh, uh, of Faran, uh, it's a project that I started after uh, a piece uh, that I did before called Magnetism, which is the magnet uh, and uh, famous magnet and art uh, and iron fighting. Uh, this piece, uh, uh, it's, uh, yes, this piece, it was the first piece that I, I, uh, I start to try to explore uh, identity and uh, very important when I talk about identity, I spoke about uh, uh, you know, like spirituality or uh, things that influence on the, uh, on the, you know, uh, shaping our culture about our. All that is all of we need to that. We need to all yeah, so, so, yeah, this is, this is part of hundred found objects now. <laughs> So yeah. You are the hundred pound object. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the hundred pound object. Yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> Maybe it's a, it's a, a secret. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the view. One of you. Yeah, so the hundred found object is was, uh, uh, I collect hundred object from Mecca. Different times, different locations, different, and some of this object is something we throw in the street. Uh, some things is, uh, that things that uh, pilgrims come with, you know, like they, they leave it or they buy it from the market. Uh, uh, one of them, this is a small, uh, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure this is a viewfinder, or they call it sometimes a master viewfinder. Uh, I'm sure anyone go to Mecca, he, he have this uh, thing with him. And, you know. So that for me, I find the three generation of the viewfinder. One generation in the 60s until uh, 70s, 80s, and I find the 90s to 2000 generation, and I find the modern one. And I did uh, this artwork with the three generations, from the black and white to the color for 80s uh, saturated life. And after that, uh, you know, skyscraper, you know, everyone happy about skyscraper, the new time, so. We have one of the 90s fine viewers in the Hajj exhibition here. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's beautifully, really, I mean, it's very much related also to the stories of the people, to their memories and yes. all of that. Yeah, and I think everyone go to Hajj, uh, I still have one. It's the first gift I get it from my father when he go to Hajj, and um, that is the, how the idea come. But also, at the same time, I have uh, in the hundred found object there is a book. But 
uh, there is a uh, you know document there is a lot of things that also happening during my five years research in Mecca uh, the hundred found object is two things is the object itself but in the same time it's also the the uh, text the text uh, every uh, object uh, we, we build a narrative that uh, all objects can tell a story so we humanize or we it's called uh, speculative realism uh, as a philosophy where object can talk so that's the idea each uh, uh, object connected to the other object with a story so when you find the black stone so it starts with this i am a black stone i they find me in this place and then they start with this story so it's a uh, uh, the hundred object have a hundred short story all of the hundred uh, stories give the novel of Mecca City in the, our time. Yeah. Um, I know we're a few weeks away from one of your major exhibitions that are that's opening in the Brooklyn Museum. Um, is, would you give us a bit of overview on what we or what anyone would be expecting when? they see uh, Mecca Journeys that's opening on the 1st of December. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and the Brooklyn Museum is called Mecca Journey, Rahalat uh, Mecca. It's, it's, uh, I'm trying to uh, do a part of the journey that related to my uh, context uh, directly because the Mecca project, when I start with the Mecca project, I start to build like, uh, I, I tell myself I will do it in six months, the project, to finish. I will document Mecca City in six months. Then it went to like more than five years. <laughs> so this is the first maybe, uh, uh, I will not say comprehensive because the project still have a lot, but I show, uh, maybe we can say this uh, exhibition show the journey. Or, or spoke about the journey itself, because the, how the journey connects people to each other. Uh, and it, uh, it's about the journey in Mecca, but at the same time we choose the artwork that connect people to each other uh, and uh, uh, with a global context as well. Yeah. It makes sense for you to be in the Guggenheim Obrovi collection because of that context as well. Okay. Um, shall we open it? Maybe we open it to questions, if any, oh. There are a few questions in the audience. Mm. Hello, after my friendship with the Empty Quarter Gallery in Dubai, I became familiar with the work of Rima Al-Faisa. And since Salima mentioned today uh, that is part of your collection, a question came to my mind. What are the woman artists, since the subject is collecting col uh, connections, collecting her, what are the women artists that relate both museums, if you have? And second, how many women artists are part of your different collections? Thank you, independently. Guggenheim and Sayed. Uh, this I'm is not, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very admirative, uh, but I don't have any question with you because everything is clear. Well, I'm, I'm just like, I'll just answer like a general, um, in general, like there are uh, plenty of, uh, you can say brilliant Emirati, female Emirati artists, uh, whether they were established or growing or even to discover soon. So um, I'm, uh, I think I'm proud to say that we have most of the contemporary pieces that we have collected up to today in the Zayed National Museum are Emirati female artists. And um, just to name a few, excuse me if I missed any of the ones, Nora, maybe you can <laughs> remind me, but we have, we have pieces uh, as from, for not only Emirati, but also Reem al Faisal, for example. We have Reem al Faisal, we have from Sheikh Ahur al Qasimi's collection, we have from Sheikh Al Yazi bin Tinhayan collection, we have, uh, me? Zainab, yeah, we have from Zainab al Hashmi as well. So these are just a few, uh, yes, Arwan Na'ni, of course, her installation in the Hajj Memories of a Journey exhibition. 
So these are just few names that I can really, on my mind right now. But I don't think, I think it's not about segregating female or male now. It's about really telling the story of one story. I think this is more important, the story of humanity and the story of cultures and civilizations. So I think this is what you really need yeah, to focus on. Thanks. I don't we, we don't, but no, the Guggenheim yeah. Abu Dhabi definitely uh, focuses on female artists, especially ones from the 1960s that didn't have a time, didn't have a moment in history at that time for them to be credited. And there's many of them that are in our collection. Um, we have works by Louise Bourgeois, Etel uh, Adnan, just to name a few, um, Salwa Rauda Shair. Um, I mean, the list goes on. We're also an all-female curatorial team, so... Um, yes, exactly, yeah. like the full team. <laughs> Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Yes, hello, this is a question for Ahmed. I wanted to ask you from, from the photographs, the new photographs of Mecca. It's, I've only seen them in books and in, uh, on big screens like this. It's very difficult to see Al Kaaba, where we usually saw um, used to seeing photographs of Mecca and the focus is always Al Kaaba. Have you thought of photographing from Al Kaaba out what's happening in Mecca in general? Uh, yes, uh, you mean from the side of Kaaba. There is one photo, yeah, there is one photo in the Brooklyn Museum uh, from uh, going out uh, to this, uh, yeah, it's another uh, perspective, I can say, maybe. Yeah, so first things, you know, like uh, even in the book, the story in the book, uh, or in the, when I start, uh, first I start to inspection. I, I called it inspection first, and uh, for me it was very sensitive subject, even for myself as a, as a you know, like uh, Ahmed Matar, uh, artist uh, from Muslim community, from so you know, like this is big things for me when I see myself handling camera in front of Mecca. It's not easy, it's a bit something uh, have a lot inside. So this is why I start, like when I was in helicopter, I s first time when I go to the helicopter and go and I see Mecca from the helicopter, I didn't take photo. I stand and just look. It was it was big moment for me. I, I, I stop, I stop, I lost a lot you know, to, to photograph. Uh, so yeah, there is another photograph from down, from the, uh, close to Kaaba, and it show uh, outside. And also there is a nice video which is uh, I didn't uh, release yet, which is uh, sh uh, show uh, like uh, uh, from uh, from Kaaba and show up, but with the with the dome view. Ahmed, just following on. The, to the previous question to a certain extent, and I'm thinking in the context of the Brooklyn Museum. Yeah. How are you going to be able to relay and portray the internal tension that you have and the fact that certain of your actions are haram to a global audience who may or may not understand what you're going through in terms of taking photos of an area that they will never have the opportunity to see because they are not by and large, Muslim. Yeah, you are. Yes, uh, you are right. This is why uh, this uh, this uh, we take like one year just to prepare for the selection of this exhibition. It was really important and very, uh, uh, you know, critical to choose the right narrative for the global audiences. And uh, 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 you know, I called it the, the Cosmopolis. <laughs> so it's a Cosmopolitan. You know, metropolis like this one. So it's a cosmopolis uh, project. So you know, all of the city in the world, you know, having all of this kind of uh, cosmopolitan uh, metropolis. You know, uh, something happening to the new cities. You know, there is a lot of problem uh, in, in urban planning in the cities and understanding of the uh, existing of the human uh, being inside the cities. This is one. But in the same time, this religious city has another vision. So. It's uh, this project you will see in Brooklyn. It's standing between urbanism, but also in the faith economy. How the faith economy can direct uh, uh, 
uh, a city. It's a big, big subject, and uh, I'm, I'm yet, you know, experimenting uh, uh, to understand how faith economy can shape a new, uh, a new era. And uh, I just uh, read uh, when I start last, uh, I think by one year, I, I just read this that. Uh, uh, faith uh, economy, you know, worth more than Apple and Google combined together in America. You see, in America, this is uh, what about the, the spirituality of Asia? <laughs> yeah. We have one more question. Hello. Uh, I think the relationship between religion and capitalism is very interesting, and I just want to know, uh, in, for your personal views, um, that the sacred journey of Hajj is being commodified and capitalized on, and I want to know if, in your opinion, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, that, that, the, that the, maybe the first cause why I did this research. It was part of my research to understand, to put, uh, you know, like a bigger understanding because, you know, there is a lot of uh, questioning about, okay, there is increasing of people, three millions coming and there is three millions inhabitants and they are increasing more and more every year. But how, how this is, could uh, be planned to, to, to accommodate all of this number? It's a big mission. And at the same time, is this is the right moment also another question and this is you know we should ask ourselves usually about uh, how and uh, and when uh, uh, all of this you know construction and uh, what happening also in the, all of the cities outside is it fit or is it can be the right model to to learn from you know there is it's, it's a big question and the book you know like the book is not answer is it's just um, uh, a commentary about how I understand all of this. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khaled Darwish. I'm a visual artist. And uh, my question to you, Ahmed, is as a, as a doctor, as a medical doctor, does your practice affect your um, artworks because most of my works are like medical art and I'm not a doctor but I read a lot of uh, medical papers and medical research papers so does your practice as a doctor affect your artworks? Very interesting I want to see your artwork now <laughs> yes I you know I start uh, also uh, there is a lot of my artwork I use the x-ray in hospital for exploration I use the uh, uh, prescription, uh, one, uh, there is an artwork, you know. I think the orientation of my practice in art uh, uh, connected, you know, without, um, you know, like unconsciously to the, to, to the, to the medical, you know, like look, because for me, medicine is a common sense. It's how to see things uh, within feeling, not just the science. So it's something stand between subjectivity and objectivity. So that's for me very, very important. Uh, and uh, uh, also, I, uh, even in Mecca project, I start with, uh, I, if I can say that, how can, if we think about the city like a body, I think we will care more about the city and the planning and the urban planning. So, we, we, we understand that the, this city has a feeling. There is a pain. There is a time where the city has a disease or has a changing on the weather or all of this. This is very sensitive and very important. I think this is, could be something we, we push it to the architect schools that what about if we think about the cities is a, a body, like a body, or treat it like a body. My name is Sahel Jashima. I'm uh, also an artist, but uh, a businessman as well. And um, a lot of the work that I used to do, especially in Abu Dhabi, was community-based, and there was a joy 
in executing these programs because it's a lot of work, you know, step one, step two, A, B, C, one, two, three, before a final result is achieved. I'm sensing a similar thing here because you talked about the journey, you know, that one has to take at Hajj. You talked about the permissions that had to be done and the obstacles overcome uh, for some of these aerial shots to be done and approved by the government. So I guess my question to you is, what's more enjoyable, the final product, the photo, or the journey for you to make the photo? Because it must be a considerable journey, and it's probably is a reflection also of the product itself. Totally the second, the journey itself. You know, the destination, you know, the journey is the destination, usually. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, the, the, the most enjoyable and the most interesting part is the journey itself, you know. And uh, when you have a journey, you will not stop. <laughs> journey. It's all about the process of making. Yeah. I think context, life, and this is what about our, uh, art, you know. The final product is, is take you to the journey, usually. It's, uh, it's uh, what they call it, a delil, delil, if I can say that. The result, the final result is the guideline or, or the, the, the mirror of the journey. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think the journey is, uh, uh, and uh, what we, the final product artwork is like a symbol or uh, something that reflect all of the things behind it. It's connected, but for me, uh, personally, is the journey itself. And considering that you did so much community work before with the yeah. cow and everything. Yes, and uh, people still, you know, uh, a lot of uh, people still remember this. And uh, this is why also we create and also at the same time we inspire from the artists before. And also inspiration will go to the future for the generation. And that's it. Shukran. Thank you. I just have a quick question for Ahmed. I, I know you through magnetism, which I found incredibly moving and fascinating. How did that begin? What was the process? You know, it, it's very simple, very, very simple. It's the school. We play in the school with the magnet and things. Then uh, I, I find it, I remember just when I was uh, doing the you know, like move under the table, put the magnet and move the magnet like, and this is for me was the people. That's the beginning. But after that, when I, when I, uh, I start to find a way to build this, because a lot of people, you know, I mean, my family, the people around me, they say, when you go to Mecca, you know, you will feel uh, attraction. This is a famous saying in our uh, community, you know, like in society. So that's, that's the idea. Then I start to build it very simple, just iron filing and cube of magnet, this cube of magnet. Then with a twist, then you have this, uh, this uh, you know, feeling. Statement. A statement, yeah. Thank you everyone for coming um, and we look forward to seeing you in other talks that have been curated by Munira Saya. There's a fantastic program and uh, I saw the listing is available in the Canvas magazine for the week. So please pick one up on the way. Thank you. Thank you.